And if you think for one second that I am not reading this aloud to our future child the minute he or she gets out of the womb, you are sorely mistaken. It's like everyone just moves on without a word, like it didn't even happen. This is problematic. Okay, I'll do this one if I'm feeling adventurous, this one if I'm feeling Orwellian. Ooh, it, it started to get stressful, so I just skipped to the end to see if everything turns out okay. I just got this fascination with snowy owls, so I thought I'd do a little bit of reading about it. You can't beat the tangible feeling of a real book. Hi guys, and welcome back to my booktube channel. Today we're going over my TBR. Welcome to the most vibrant book club in town. Today we're discussing our book. The Secret Garden was what Mary called it when she was thinking of it. She liked the name and she liked still more the feeling that when it's beautiful. Hello! In this video, we're gonna be talking about all nine Enneagram types as readers. If you know me well, you know that I love reading, I love books, and that's why I am just so excited about today's sponsor, Book of the Month. <gasps> Kid Book of the Month box, thank you! I've been waiting so long for this! Where did she come from? Book of the Month is a monthly book subscription box of new and early releases. You can skip any month, any time, and you don't need to pay any extra fees for that. And you can get your first book for only $9.99 using my code BOOKBUD. How it works is you pick one of the five Book of the Month selections for the month and they will ship it right to your door. These are the book selections for March and I could not be more delighted with them. The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donnie Walton is a historical fiction book that is equal parts rock and roll and black feminist punk spirit. What's Mine and Yours by Nama Coaster is literary fiction about two, the lives of two families in a divided southern community. Too Good to Be True by Carola Lovering is a creepy thriller that is going to make you wonder which of the narrators, if any of the narrators, are actually telling the truth. In a Book Club Far Away by Tiff Marcello is about two estranged friends who try to reconnect with each other. And the Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, which is actually the book that I decided to start reading immediately. I am right here in it. It is very good. It is about a apothecary in London long ago who helps women fight back by giving them poisons, essentially to poison the men who hurt them. It is a read. So if you want to get one of these books or another one of the selections that they have on their website for only $9.99, you can use my code BOOKBUD using the link in my description. Now let's continue the bookishness by seeing how each Enneagram type is as a reader. We're starting with Enneagram type 9, the peacemaker. We all have one of these calming peace seekers in our lives. They're the easygoing, go with the flow kind of people who have the unique ability to merge groups of people together. They're core desire is to have inner stability, so they seek people, things, and experiences that contribute to that peace of mind. Cozy blankets? Yes. Childhood friends? Keep them around. Bubble baths? Bring it on. For this reason, I am calling Enneagram Type 9s the relaxation re-reader. And I say this because these are the types of readers who return to books that they read long ago that make them feel warm and cozy and homey. Even if they have a pile of new books that they really want to read, it's hard to resist the old faithful. You know the book, the one where you know every single plot point, every character, every line, every page is just like, you've touched it so many times, it is like a family member to you. What are you reading tonight? Ella Enchanted. Again? You read that last month. I just want to escape to Frell with Ella and Prince Charm. Okay, and okay. And if you think for one second that I am not reading this aloud to our future child the minute he or she gets out of the womb, you are sorely mistaken. Enneagram 8, the challenger, are the mavericks, the warriors, the justice seekers. They are the people in your life who stand up for themselves and the people they love. They approach life with a confident intensity that just bewilders us other types. Like, how do you do all the things that you do, type 8s? Please tell us. That's why I feel like challengers approach reading the same way they approach everything else in their lives, with confident intensity. I am dubbing them the writing watchdog. They are going to be the ones who call out problematic parts of books. They will be the ones who seek out authors of different races and backgrounds so that they have a well-rounded bookshelf. They will enthusiastically recommend books they love and voraciously discourage others from reading books that they hate. 
I'm sorry, but even if it's unconventional because it's Daphne doing it to Simon, a non-consensual adult activity is not okay. And there aren't any lasting repercussions for the victim of the assault or any consequences whatsoever for the perpetrator. It's like everyone just moves on without a word, like it didn't even happen. This is problematic. But what if I just read it for the other parts? The romance, the intrigue? I mean, you can read it, but I would be remiss if I didn't warn you about everything you're getting yourself into. Can I borrow your copy? Oh no, I'm burning this this one. And I'm writing a strongly worded letter to Avon Books. They don't even know what's coming. They don't know. Let's talk about Enneagram Type 7, The Optimist. These playful escapists probably love reading, but they can't quite seem to read just one book at a time. This may be because of their core fear of being deprived or missing out on something super duper fun. How can you commit to just one book when there's thousands of amazing stories just begging to be read? That's why I call Type 7s the variety reader. You ready to go to the beach? Yeah, I just need to pick out my book. It just kind of depends on my mood, you know. Let's see, I'll do this one if I'm feeling adventurous, this one if I'm feeling Orwellian, ooh, this one if I want to start working on my podcast, and this one if I'm feeling kind of literary and smart, you know. Only four books. What if you run out of things to read? How silly of me. I really should get another one just in case I feel like reading something else. Let's see, this one. Oh, Enneagram Sixes, we love you. If you have a six in your life, you know that they are loving, faithful, and dutiful people. They use their troubleshooting skills to make sure things run smoothly. Anxiety is a core emotional struggle for type sixes because they are in the head center. They have this inner committee who makes it difficult for the type sixes to relax because they have to, you know, think about all the worst case scenarios and then troubleshoot them to make sure that everything in their life is going to be okay. That's why I'm dubbing type sixes the spoiler soothsayer. That's a mouthful. Did you just read the end of the book? It, it started to get stressful, so I just skipped to the end to see if everything turns out okay. It does. That defeats the point of reading the book. No, it doesn't. Now I can safely read the rest of the story knowing that Katniss and Peeta make it out alive. I'm starting to understand why you always have Wikipedia up when we watch movies. Yeah, I could never watch a movie without knowing the ending first. Type fives, the investigative thinker, are the Agatha Christie's and Sherlock Holmes of the Enneagram. They are intelligent, perceptive, and curious people who investigate things that they're interested in. They have a lust for knowledge that stems from their core desire of being capable and knowledgeable. When they want to know something, they go deep into the library wormhole. That's why I'm calling them the curious bibliophile. These types are not afraid to get academic. Studying for a test? No. Looks like some serious studying. I just got this fascination with snowy owls, so I thought I'd do a little bit of reading about it. Are those stacks of owl books? Yeah, everything the library had. Of course. Let's dive into Enneagram Type 4's The Romantics as readers. These creative souls are authenticity seekers. Their core desire is to find their authentic identity, and they do this by exploring the beauty and emotions in the world. That's why, as readers, they may fall in love with the characters in their books. They're not afraid to cry when their favorite character dies. And they're most likely opposed to things that make the reading experience cheaper or basic. Basic. That's why I bet most type 4s are opposed to e-readers. So I am dubbing type 4s the paper purists. You can't beat the tangible feeling of a real book, not a Kindle. I mean, think how many people's fingers have touched this page and this page. And this page. Were they at a park? Was it their wedding day? Were they on a tropical vacation? Maybe they were sipping a cafe au lait at a Paris cafe. But think how many hands have touched this book. That's disgusting. Mmm, <sighs> it smells like chocolate and coffee. Oh. This is way overdue. What is that stain? Probably someone spilled red wine on it while they were standing out on a terrace in, a, in the countryside of, a, of an Italian villa. It's brown. Why do you have to ruin everything? Enneagram type threes, the achievers, are efficient humans who have a core desire to be admired and successful. As a type three myself, I have to say 
that I do not like not finishing a book because it feels like a failure and then if I don't finish it, I don't get to check it off of my Goodreads account and contribute to my 2021 reading challenge. And yes, I have Goodreads and I would love to be friends with you on there and see what you're reading. I will put it in the description down below. Anyway, I am dubbing type threes the influencer reader because I feel like type threes have a hard time keeping their hobby a hobby. If they love something like reading, they're eventually gonna try to make it something where they can be successful at it and maybe make money and have a business. Hi guys, and welcome back to my booktube channel. Today we're going over my TBR for March, which as you guys can see is pretty extensive. When I was in fourth grade, I won the readathon like four months in a row and Mrs. Davidson said I was exceptional. And as my 200,000 subscribers, all of you guys, can attest I am kind of an exceptional reader which is why I do so well at this booktube channel okay let's go over the books so for okay type twos it's your turn these generous and empathetic people want to be loved and needed by others so when I was investigating what kind of reader a type two would be I thought the book club organizer would be the exact right way to go. Type twos prioritize relationships above all else. So it really makes sense to me that a type two would want reading to be a community experience. Welcome to the most vibrant book club in town. Today we're discussing our book, one to Watch by Kate Stamen London. Okay, ladies, what are your thoughts? This was super cheesy, like blue cheese level. And I loved it. <laughs> totally watch The Bachelorette if Bea was the lead. What do you think? To be very honest, I was just so excited about this book club that it became really hard to focus on actually reading the book. But I'm just so excited that you guys are here and that we're talking and hanging out. This is so fun. Enneagram type ones, the perfectionist, are ethical and orderly people with a core desire of maintaining their integrity. As readers, they will want their reading experience to contribute to the betterment of themselves and the world. That's why I think type ones are enticed by audiobooks because you can be productive while simultaneously expanding your mind with a good book. The Secret Garden was what Mary called it when she was thinking of it. She liked the name. And she liked still more the feeling that when its beautiful old walls shut her in, no one knew where she was. It seemed almost like being shut out of the world in some fairy place. The few books she had read and liked had been fairy story books, and she had read of secret gardens in some of the stories. If you want your first book of the month book for just $9.99, just use my code BOOKBUD in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This was such a fun video to make and I honestly would not have been sponsored without the support of you guys on this channel. So thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next video. Ah! <laughs> Just, okay.